Hi there. Um, some of you will have no doubt seen the uh, various videos that I've uploaded in the past couple of months uh, using the um, SDR Play RSP1A SDR receiver. Um, you know, my conclusion was basically uh, it's a superb receiver that gives you, you know, 95% of the performance of the ELAD really. Um, but for about 10% of the price. Uh, I bought the ELAD FDM Duo a couple of years ago. I bought the transceiver, fair enough, but uh, it cost nearly £800. And, um, you know, you can pick up a RSP1A for less than £100. So, amazing performance uh, price ratio, for sure. Um, I was given it by uh, Radio User Magazine. The editor contacted me and asked me if I would do a review following up from my review of the Texan S2000, uh, which I was obviously very happy to do. Uh, and uh, I recorded some videos whilst I was effectively testing that unit um, to uh, give me the sort of practical, technical background to write the review. Um, so the review uh, has been published and it's in the April edition of Radio User Magazine, which is here. Uh, I get this magazine every month. I know that a lot of you do too. Um, I've said it before really, but you know, we're kind of fortunate that we have a magazine, uh, a regular publication that supports our hobby. Um, and you know, I, I just think that we should all do what we can to, uh, you know, buy a copy every month, basically. Um, they've got some new features, actually, or relatively new features. They do propagation of space weather now, which, for obviously, for DXs is uh, useful. It's even more useful to understand how propagation of space weather works than simply know what the sort of current conditions are. Uh, and with my hectic life and work, um, I, I don't get enough time to sit down and look at this stuff. Um, Interesting, an advert from AirSpy. Uh, their new receiver, the R2, has had some superb reviews. Um, but it is more than twice as expensive as the RSP1A. So, you know, it's going to have to be pretty good, I think, to, uh, to take the price performance crown, uh, which is effectively the conclusion of my review. Um, it's quite big on SDRs in this month's magazine. So here it is, performance and portability. So this is my review. Um, you've seen a lot of the reception videos. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, spend some time testing this little device. It's so portable because it runs off USB. So you can take this with your laptop out um, with an antenna and, and, and there you go. Um, from time to time I take my ELAD out, but that sort of requires a 12 volt lead acid battery um, which is okay but it's it's not really something you can do on an ad hoc basis with this thing as long as your laptop's got power you know you can go out for an hour or two and um, and do some DXing. Um, quite a few transatlantic medium wave catches uh, on this uh, little SDR and uh, I think I copied Caracas from Venezuela on it. Um, sensitivity, selectivity with the Wellbrook was, well, there was not much difference to the ELAD, to be honest. I think the noise floor on this receiver was slightly higher on some bands, but, you know, for a tenth of the cost, you know, you'd let that go. Um, and in terms of, yeah, selectivity, you know, it's got all the bells and whistles of the ELAD FDM SW2 software, really. Um, the only, the only difference I found with this receiver is that without using the medium wave um, broadcast notch, uh, you get a lot of uh, spurious signals on long wave. Um, but the notch actually, in fact it's there, it's that little button there, broadcast notch, uh, the notch filter uh, removes them. Um, so it's superb. So yeah, so if you're interested in reading a little bit more detail about my experience with the uh, RSP1A. It's in this month's edition. Um, and then one other thing. Um, John Hudson uh, of SDR Play. He was a very nice chap. I've spoken to him once or twice. Um, he wrote to the editor just to make the point that um, SDR Play, like a lot of 
hardware companies that use software, sort of continually upgrading the, their, their software. Uh, and SDR Uno, which is what I use, uh, the latest version uh, now comes straight out of the box. Uh, all of the relevant windows pop up, which um, that didn't happen on the uh, on the previous version. Um, and with a couple of clicks of the mouse button, you can uh, go directly to all the amateur bands below two gigahertz, long, medium, shortwave broadcast bands can be selected really quickly. Um, that wasn't possible uh, with the version of the software that I've got, but that was fine. Um, and it's just it's a nice feature for people who've never used SDR software before, or people who've never used this software. So I thought I'd make that point as well, um, as uh, John Hudson took the trouble to uh, write to the magazine to let them know. So, um, so yeah. Um, so there we go. Uh, I'm still reading my copy. There's actually there's another inter interesting article. The editor George, he went to uh, Madeira. Uh, recently and he visited their house of light as he calls it the Museum of Electricity that's an interesting article um, and there's also the second part of an article about BBC TV uh, BBC Colour TV 50 years of BBC Colour Television part 2 so I don't know if you caught part 1 or not but uh, that, this is also really interesting I'm showing my age I'm old enough to know what a test screen looks like I remember sat there as a kid Waiting for it to disappear for the kids' programs to come to come on at sort of three four o'clock in the afternoon. So there you go. Um, so yeah, the April edition Radio User Magazine. Um, if you're thinking about buying an RSP one A, you've seen some of the videos perhaps on my channel. Um, buy the magazine and uh, read the review. Um, okay, well uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching.